All right, welcome everybody to the Virtual Care Partner Healthcare Provider Overview. Uh, my name is Jeff Giamalva and my wife Lisa and I, we are the Vice Presidents of Virtual Care Partners. Um, we have different titles. I'm the Vice President of Sales and my wife Lisa is the Vice President of Partner Success. And we are so excited uh, to be able to share with you um, a business overview really tailored to the healthcare provider because we have a very unique offering that we are bringing throughout the United States and uh, I am so excited to be able to introduce um, our first speaker tonight, our first speaker, our only speaker, <laughs> highlighted speaker tonight, Dr. Fernessa Hall. And I want to give her the proper introduction as you can see here. Uh, Dr. Hall was born and raised in Jamaica, Queens, New York. I knew I liked her. She attended Harvard University, attended University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill Medical School, completed an internship and residency internal medicine at Franklin Square Hospital, board certified 1992 and recertification in 2002, solo private practice, I love this, nearly killed me. I'm sure she'll go into more depth on that. Um, solo concierge house call practice, Think about this, when you hear what we're offering and look at her credibility, solo private practice, I'm sorry, solo concierge house call practice, 2003 to the present. She currently lives in Greensboro, North Carolina, special interest in natural therapies and nutrition for health and wellness. And here's my favorite, everyone, you ready? Here's my favorite plays electric bass in the cover band, Big Betty and the Punch Bowl. <laughs> Wait a minute, I'm gonna say that again. Plays electric bass in the cover band, Big Betty and the Punch Bowl. So forget that doctor stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, Without further ado, Dr. Fernessa Hall. Thank you, thank you for that introduction. Um, uh, you know, I won't be quitting any of my jobs to uh, launch a career in medicine, uh, I mean in uh, music. I, I like to eat regularly, so music won't quite cut it for me. Let me just uh, see if this. Let's, let's make sure we, I, I passed the baton over to you. Let's make sure that yeah. went. Okay. You should be able to control the slides. Should, but. There you go. There we go. Okay. Go back, okay. So, uh, yes, I will talk about that. Um, you know, back in 1992, it's hard for me to even believe that it's been that long, but in 1992, medicine was different. We didn't have a uh, discounted fee for service, and, or at least not as deep as that was. Uh, we didn't have um, uh, capitation, you know. Uh, we didn't have, you know, all these... Um, administrative things, you know, can I have used this medicine in my patient? Uh, can I have permission to order an MRI on my patient? Um, you know, it started out great and I love that I spent time with my patients. I got to talk to them and get to know them and understand them. And uh, as time went on, I had to see more and more patients each day and it really took the joy out of practicing. I'm pretty sure I was clinically depressed um, I was um, nickel and dime to death. I uh, really felt like I couldn't care for people the way they should have been cared for. And I was fortunate I was able to sell my practice, which is pretty much unheard of. Um, I did start a solo concierge house call practice. I charge um, by the unit of time, more like an attorney. And, uh, and that was growing nicely. And then 2008 hit. And uh, with the market crash, a lot of disposable income went away, and people went back into the office. Um, since that time, I've changed careers, and I've gotten into life insurance medicine, which affords me the time to do this. And you may wonder, like, well, why if she's doing life insurance medicine and working from home and, um, you know, having this flexible life, why is she, you know, here on a carry call at night? And I, I think part of it is because... Um, I know what the pressures are out there to try to make it, and I'm sure it's worse today than it was in 1992. And when Jeff and Lisa approached me uh, with this opportunity, I, 
I felt obligated to share that with doctors that are still in the trenches and fighting a good fight and trying to be independent and, and trying to just take good care of people. And um, this to me is such a, a fantastic opportunity for physicians to stay in their wheelhouse and um, create a better quality of practice and of uh, their life uh, because practice is, you know, so overwhelming. So uh, with that, I will, um, I'll launch into the, to the program and um, hopefully uh, it will be worth your time and I'll try to be efficient and get you all the information you need. So telemedicine. Okay. Okay, Jeff. There we go. I'll do it for you. Go ahead. Go, there you go. You got it. Okay. So, you know, telemedicine is all over the news, and it's kind of funny because um, if you've been in practice any amount of time, you've been doing telemedicine just through the telephone, and um, and now it's sort of taken the, that next generation, and now we've got Skype, and we can use our phone, and, you know, we can see people. And with that, um, uh, more and more uh, companies are in this telemedicine space, but as you all know, None of them have engaged the local physician, the physician in the trenches that's taking care of people. What they have been doing is having their isolated systems and they're just siphoning patient visits and essentially money out of medical practices. And this is sort of, you know, what's been going on since I left, you know, where you have minute clinics, you know, with the nurse practitioner seeing patients, you've got pharmacists giving vaccines, I mean, on and on and on, physicians are, are just being nickel and dimed to death. And uh, the conventional telemedicine uh, systems are just contributing to that. Uh, the telemedicine market is expected to grow exponentially. And, you know, in our rapid pace society, you know, people are going to demand the convenience of having a visit on your phone. Um, so, and it's here to stay. It's the future of medicine. And um, so much of what we do can be taken care of in a remote uh, visit type situation. Um, you know, look at this, this list. I mean, this is the stuff that we see every day, the bread and butter. Um, if you look at these statistics, they're actually quite astounding. 70% of all acute care, urgent care, and ER visits can be handled effectively by phone or video and 91% of these telemedicine visits are better than or equivalent to a face-to-face -face visit. Uh, that's a lot of time for everyone, for the patient, uh, the physician, um, the practice alike. It's a big burden. Um, the cost, $155 for an urgent care visit, an average, you know, that's pretty obscene. And then don't even talk about the ER with, you know, thousands of dollars and hours and hours of waiting. I was just in the emergency room with, with a friend that had a concussion. I was there for three hours and they still hadn't done a scan of her head. And she had a concussion, was unconscious. Um, most practices are closed after six, so patients are left you know, to figure out what to do. Um, and then this last statistic really shocked me that it would take 21 days for a patient to get an appointment. Back when I was in practice, you know, people were having a fit if you couldn't get them in the next day. I can't imagine what, you know, 21 days, um, you know, it's just, just hard to believe. Um, so telemedicine can, can take care of most things and technology is going to take that even further. I don't know if you can see this, but it's a little device. It plugs into my phone, and it's a camera on the tip. Point to the and, camera. Um, there we go. It's a camera with a light. And I was able to put this in my ear and take a picture of my eardrum and email it to myself. And um, there's technology out there where you can listen to heart sounds and lung sounds. And so technology in the next few years is going to blow this space wide open and we'll be able to do so much more remotely. Um, 
see. It just doesn't seem to want to work there. So, so your choices are ride this wave, get on it early, or get crushed by it because it's coming and um, in, you can either capitalize on it or just get decimated by it because that's what's coming. You know, there, there is no um, troops coming to save the day. I think we have to save ourselves. And so we have to do things proactively to get ahead of it. And uh, I think Carrie, as you will see, fits that bill. Next. So telemedicine the old way. As I said earlier, telemedicine historically has been funneling patients out of the practice. So funds and patients are elsewhere. Uh, there's also challenges with continuity of care because those records are wherever. Um, but if you were you know, ambitious and wanted to start doing telemedicine on your own, it would cost you a significant amount of money up front to work with a platform, and then significant maintenance costs ongoing. You're not getting reimbursed for it, so you have to bill for it and collect it from your patients. So you pay to start, you pay to maintain it, you're going to have to see a certain number of people just to cover that nut, and then when you do get paid, you get to pay 3% or more out to an agency to collect it for you. Um, all of this to me spells big headache and a, um, you know, an uphill battle to even think about doing it. Then there's the carry way uh, that is partnering with the doctor to make it so that it's, it's beneficial for everyone. Carrie's platform is free to practitioners. There is no upfront cost to use and access this platform. Um, it's easy to implement. It takes minutes to get it set up on your phone or your computer. Um, it integrates into your practice. You generate income immediately. You can, sh you can um, share call with other doctors and actually flag your patients over to that doctor if you're not available. You have 24-7 backup with the cloud physician so that, you know, something falls through the cracks, the patient has backup care. Um, I don't know about you guys, but back in the day when, uh, you know, cell phone batteries didn't last that long, I've had a few episodes where my phone didn't work. I was, you know, caught in the rain and the phone died and I had no access. And things happen, of course, when you're, you know, in a blackout situation like that. But uh, in this situation, anything happens, you know, there's help for that patient. Um, Carrie provides branded material so that you um, are telling your story about telemedicine and why you're doing it and what value it has to the patient. And your website will have your information in your picture. And, you know, the key is, is um, showing your patients that there is value to this. And, um, and, and really, you know, just setting the tone for how all of this is going to enhance the practice, uh, expand your reach to take care of them, and make for easier access for the patient. Um, let's see. So the other unique uh, thing about, well, there's several unique things about Carrie, but you get to see your patient. So now you can see your patients in your office. You can see them virtually. You can schedule all of them. It's just part of your practice. Um, you can have virtual walk-in clinic, for instance, Saturday morning. You know, your staff doesn't want to come in on Saturday. They like getting paid overtime, but they don't want to stay late on Thursday night at 7 when whatever is coming on TV. So now, instead of having to pay the overhead to have the staff there, to have the office open on, you know, a late night or a Saturday, you can sit at your kitchen table sipping coffee Saturday morning and have a full clinic and get paid. No billing, no collecting, no chasing. 
Now this fits into your practice. Mid-levels can do it. So you can have a mid-level on Saturday morning. You know, I did a little math and for 25 visits a week, your mid-level would generate $60,000 to your bottom line. Now, I don't know about you guys, but back when I was in practice, uh, 60 grand more for the year, you know, I might still be in practice. Um, you know, as I said before, you can forward, if there's another doctor that you share call with and they're on care in the carry network, you can flag all your patients when they want to visit that they shuffle over to that other doctor, that other doctor gets paid. It's a, a perfect on-call type situation, particularly when you, when you add our cloud doctors. I still cannot make this thing move. There we go. So, you know, I talked about billing and collection before and how if you did it on your own, you'd have to chase patients down and, you know, and obviously lose uh, some of that uh, income from chasing it. Well, with Carrie, you're paid directly. You see your patient, Carrie pays you $50. It's that clean and simple. On top of that, you get paid on the membership fees that your patients pay. So now you've created two revenue streams, a steady monthly income, and then based on the number of visits, a uh, fee, sort of fee-for-service type um, payment with your visits with your patients. The system is HIPAA compliant, it's secure, you know, it's got all the bells and whistles. It integrates into your EHR system, your EHR, so you have those records. You know, how nice is it to have continuity of care? You know, the on-call doctor saw your patient and when the patient comes in the next time and they say, oh, I saw your other doctor, you pull up the records and you see exactly what happened. I don't know about you, but you know, there are times when I could not get the ER to send me records on my own patient. So, you know, with Carrie and patients being able to access this, um, you should really have a better time of uh, getting all the details and having all the facts so that continuity of care, you know, is seamless. Um, slide. Ooh. So this is an example of a branded website. Uh, you can see that the patient can log in or they can register. Uh, there would be, you know, custom in, uh, information, information about you and why you're doing this and how you're integrating it into your practice. Um, you know, all of that, you know, is specific to you. Um, let's see. Next slide. Oh, this, this feature I love because it's you have the your waiting room and you can see exactly who's up what their complaint is and the beauty of this is the patient isn't really waiting the patient has their phone let's say that they're going to do a visit they've requested the visit they can have their phone in their pocket they can be doing house chores they could be driving across town whatever they can do be in their life and when you sit down and you're ready to see them, the system will send them a message and say, the doctor's ready to see you. Then they can stop and take care of their visit, get taken care of. You can send the prescription to them, and then they're back to their life. People do this, and they can't believe it, and they love it. And, uh, and, you know, and even for you, you can see how long people are waiting. You can manage this better. There are so many ways to use carry in a practice. The primary way I think of is, you know, after hours and weekends. You know, think about it, guys. You know, I've, see, I got out in 92. That's, you know, a zillion years of giving away care every night and every weekend. That's thousands and thousands of dollars of, of intellectual property just squandered and you know in the past three decades you know the only thing that's happened is that we've been beaten up and we've been paid less and less well guess what um, we need to save ourselves we need to take it back and we need to get paid for our time and so after hours weekends you know people calling during the day trying to get care you know all of those people can be routed to telemedicine visits 
make your office not double and triple book to get through the day. You know, you can have your mid-level set aside some time and take care of these visits. They're generally like eight to 10 minutes. Um, and you get paid. And I think that that's, you know, a, a beautiful thing. So this is a fantastic feature. Um, so, you know, like I said, you know, own, own your intellectual property. You know, it took you a long time and a lot of investment of blood, sweat, tears, and money to become a physician. Nobody else values it, you know, but we do, we can, and we do, Carrie does. Um, take back your power and, um, and get paid what you, what you deserve. Now, you all may say, you know, well, this is fine and dandy, but, you know, how do we show value for our patients? Well, the convenience factor. I mean, if I'm an hourly uh, wage earner and I need to go to the doctor and for a follow-up visit to get my blood work, otherwise I can't get my meds filled, I have to go back for that visit. Well, I have to take time off, half a day off, I have to pay to park, uh, then I have to pay a copay. I have to sit there and read. And then when I do get in, you know, it's a five minute visit with the doctor and I get a prescription and I go. It is such a better proposition for that person to take 15 minutes. The doctor is in. Ooh, let me go get their visit, get their prescription, only pay their monthly fee, and then they're off and running. Time is money for so many people. And this convenience factor, and I think the, the um, economical cost, I mean, $49 a month for a family of five, that's Starbucks money. Matter of fact, that's Starbucks money for one person, I know. $29 a month, you know, people, you know, that's one night at the movies, and that's just for you with a crappy popcorn and a soda. Um, you know, this is very economical. And with... Today's high deductible uh, health insurance that so many people have, when they go to the ER, they go to urgent care, or go to your office, it's all coming out of pocket because they haven't even come close to their $10,000 deductible. Uh, so, you know, for $49 a month and you can cover your whole family, you know, that's economical. And, and there's no additional fee for the patient to... Um, have that visit. So they pay their monthly fee and they could have three visits, four visits that month and they don't pay an additional fee. Uh, so it becomes very economical for the patient. Um, and they have that 24 seven care. So there's an extra layer of protection to make sure that they can get help when they need it. You know, and so uh, there's tremendous value for your patients to do this. And there's tremendous value to you and your practice. And, you know, and I believe that if the physician is happier and more rested and less stressed, you'll make less mistakes. If you're capturing, you know, those, those uh, after hours calls, you're actually documenting better. I can't tell you how many times I lost a little scrap of paper napkin that I wrote some note on about a patient, you know, that called me you know, when I'm out to eat somewhere and I didn't have anything to write on, you know, with this, I could just run out to my car, get on my phone, do my visit and then come back and, and be at it. You know, I could be, I could be at the beach, you know, and sitting at the, on the deck, watching the surf and take the call and get paid. So, you know, this, this really is filling a need for, for everyone. Um, I think there's one, maybe two more slides. Um, you know, and, you know, once you get on board, you know, even though the official launch to, uh, to be able to see your own patients doesn't start until October 1st, um, your patients can enroll in Cary now, and, and you can earn income from that. I actually have one of my patients enrolled today. And, uh, and I told her, I said, you know, you can't get me until, until October 1st, but she travels a lot. She's got two children, very busy, active. 
she just wanted to have the uh, peace of mind to have get some help when she needed it and um and so she she went ahead and enrolled um so you know people people are looking for this and um and i think as i said before it's a win win situation so you docs out there i want you to own your time and your expertise and value it. Um, there is value to it. And you valuing your time adds value to your practice. You can regain control of your practice and have the quality of practice that you've been wanting. And you differentiate yourself from the rest of the pack. You will be on the, the front lines of introducing telemedicine into the community and you will set yourself apart from everybody else and um and it's coming anyway so you know get ahead of it and then let's ride it all the way in so with that um uh one last thing is just to look at some of the just just pro forma of of what kind of income we're talking about with a small number of patients a hundred families enrolled and you're earning another thousand dollars, nearly a thousand dollars a month. You know, the average practice has twenty five hundred to three thousand patients. If you just had a hundred, you know, that's a three percent conversion rate. You know, that's that's minimal. Now, you know, on the other end of the spectrum, and these are just you know numbers we've made up, but with a thousand uh, memberships uh, in that ratio. $9,000 a month, $9,000 a month would have been transformative for me. Um, and, you know, this is a lifeline. This is the um, only option I see for a physician in this day and age to maintain independence. Um, you know, you can transform your life and your practice. Um, incorporating something now that you're going to have to do later and everybody out there that's a practicing physician you know that if conventional health insurers get on this and get there first they will pay you but you know as soon as the ink is dry they will start ratcheting down how much they pay you, just the way they do everything else. And, you know, eventually they'll, you know, say like they said to me years ago, oh, it's included in the cap. So, you know, your evenings and your weekends and holidays, you know, you know, would you go back to doing them for free because that's what they want. They don't want to pay you. So take control and get ahead of this and get it firmly established in your practice. Um, it's the future of medicine. Um, join carry networks now and uh, and make a real difference in your life and your practice and with your patients thank you so much for your time dr. Hall thank you so much uh, I'm, I'm so excited and uh, I, I took some notes because I'm always learning about this industry and I, I love what you said that this is going to evolve see the future of medicine is exactly what dr. Hall just talked about there is no doubt about that. And healthcare providers around the country have identified that. There's no way that, that there's no way they could deny it. But what I love is, and I want to share this with you, because of these biometric devices that we will have access to, we're going to evolve into that. And we really believe we could go from 70% to 82% of all problems could be handled virtually. But see, this is the ground floor opportunity that we're talking to all of you about tonight. Right. And I talked to a family practice doctor. I just want to share this with you today. And I said, Doc, how many patients do you have? He said, I have 4,000. Okay. I said, what amount of money would make a difference for you? This guy is working 14-hour days. He said, Jeff, if I can make an extra three to $4,000 a month, and I shared with him the carry platform, I said, can you convert 10% of your patient base? He said, yes. I said, that's $5,000 extra a month. He goes, I believe I can convert 30%.
I'll be making more from virtual care than I will be practicing medicine. Yeah. And that, that, that gave me, I just got the chills again just oh, by wow. hearing that story. It's, it's happening it's, all around us. Yes, yes. And that's, right, that's common. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's what I'm hearing every day because I'm doing these calls every single day with providers all around the country. So obviously it's very simple to implement. Get with back with the person that got you on this call. And let me tell you this, ask them about our preferred provider program. If you wanna move more into a concierge type of a practice, ask about our preferred provider program. And let us share with you how you could go out there and really establish yourself and the average business plan there is to add an additional $30,000 a month to your bottom line. So Dr. Hall, I'm gonna applaud you. I know everybody else is. We had one of our biggest attended events tonight because of you. You did an unbelievable job and I look forward to um, uh, seeing you on our next uh, provider presentation. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Everyone have a great night. Thanks for coming out. Thank you. This has been recorded, guys.